Thanks a lot, Alec. It's actually Andrew. it's actually Andrew. Yeah, yeah. That's that's okay. Um, thanks a lot. It's great to be here. It's great to see some familiar faces as well in the audience. Um, I'll take the the bright screen out of your eyes because it's not nice to look directly into the sun. But that is our lovely lovely colours. But I'll just leave brighter futures there because Paul did mention brighter futures. So I think this is um, what I'd like to share is a very positive story. So it is Andrew. How's it everyone? Not Simon. Um, as Alec pointed out, I am the co-founder with, with many others and some in the room um, and CEO of Go Solar. Uh, we are the largest residential focused solar player. So I think that's quite important. There are lots of great solar companies out there. Um, this is a, a global movement and I'll talk a little bit about it. I, I think there's been some really, really interesting uh, conversations this morning and it's given me a lot of optimism because I'm an optimist. Sometimes I get accused of being too optimistic, which I don't know what that quite means. I don't know why, why you can be described as too optimistic, especially when it comes to South Africa. Um, our vision is solar in every home. So that's not going to be on our own. Um, that's going to be with a lot of others. So I'm here to just tell you a very short, because I know we've got lunch coming up, so it's not going to be a long story. It's a short story, but it's a very positive story. It's not just my own story, or it's just not the story of one company. It's actually the story of an industry that's booming. And I think, really, if you look through all of that, it's about seeing opportunities when others see crises and problems. And there's lots of examples of that, like that. So I think I'm a very strong proponent of that there's a huge opportunities within South Africa. And I think most of you are here because you still believe in that. And I hope most of you are voting this, this uh, weekend uh, so that uh, you know there are some shifting dynamics. So what I've heard this morning is there's some really positive shifting dynamics on the political landscape, and that's great. There's some awesome shifting dynamics in the um, in the energy space, and I agree completely with um, with James that there needs to be a mix of energies. And I'm just going to tell you about the solar story because I'm a solar bull, and uh, and and so are many others globally. Um, so I think firstly, um, you know, why solar in South Africa? So I mean, I'll just put this up here. That we've got a lot of sun in South Africa. Most of you know that. It's actually some people say top five. We think it's top three. We've got one of the largest solar resources in the world. So as exciting as gas fines are and all of this minerals, these minerals that we've been blessed with and we need to make sure that we extract those responsibly for the benefit of, 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 of our citizens, we've got this resource, it's in the sky. We've got also the wind energy industry. So these, this natural resource exists and it's not going anywhere. And it's top three in the world. It's on the same latitude as parts of South Australia, which has got huge adoption. It saddens me, and we'll talk a little bit about penetration, that right here in the UK, there's more solar adoption in the home than in South Africa. And I've been here for a couple of days, and I haven't seen the sun just yet. So I, 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 if, if, if we can't beat the UK in this, then I think we, we really just need to focus on rugby. Um, so, so we've got this fantastic solar industry. We've got an energy crisis. We don't need to discuss that. I think everyone knows. The power that we do produce is expensive. It's getting more expensive every day. Um, the electricity increase this uh, in July is 12.7%. So it's way above, three times above inflation. It's been going up astronomically. Households are under pressure. And the power that we do produce has a profoundly negative impact on local communities and international communities. I think part of why we've got some of the power generation at ESCOM back on track is that not very well publicized is we've had to bypass emission laws and they forecast that there's going to be significant health concerns in places like in Pumalanga where you have to burn coal. So the energy mix is over there. I'm not advocating for it to all be the yellow bar. I think there needs to be a balanced mix of, of energy in South Africa, of course. A lot of, uh, I've seen a lot of the conversations on the chat around the future is nuclear, the future is gas. I believe those are all important in the mix, but I think the mix is, will continue to grow into renewable energy. The data suggests that by the end of next year, globally renewable energy that includes wind and other sources will be the largest form of electricity globally. And solar is growing globally. Technological changes are happening. So it's becoming um, very affordable, very reliable. And you combine that with battery storage and it overcomes the biggest challenge, which has always been, how do you match solar production with when people consume the most electricity, which is in the winter months when there's less sun or in the evenings or the mornings when there isn't when we're in darkness. So that mix is there. You can see solar is number two now. 
a few years ago when uh, we started Go Solar and the other and the industry started to boom, um, this that number was was the, the coal number was about ninety percent. Um, so I think what happened? I think when we when we and and a couple of founders got together and we decided to look at the solar industry, we said, well, why do we have this situation where we've got this huge solar resource? Um, which has been untapped. We've got rolling blackouts, which we, I'm not going to get asked a lot about load shedding, so I'm sure that'll come up. We've got load shedding, we've got power prices increasing. Why is this technology not being adopted? It's only businesses that are doing it for business imperatives, but why are households not looking at this? And the reason, there were three main reasons. Firstly, the, it was just far too expensive. It was a luxury product. It was something that you had to take a second mortgage on or a loan or use your bonus if you could. So it was very a very niche market for a very affordable, for a very high-end consumer. So it wasn't solving that problem. There was multiple layers in the chain. Effectively, there wasn't scale. And it was very complicated and it was very unreliable because what was happening is we've always consumed electricity as a service. Ever since it's been in, in, invented, we've turned it on and we've, we've paid for it at the end of the month. And now what we're starting to do is effectively invest ourselves in this infrastructure, having someone install it that it wasn't perhaps at the experience level needed, and then try and use it effectively, and it wasn't working. So all we really did, quite simply, was make it a service. So we launched in the residential space the first solar subscription model, pure subscription model out there. Um, and, that, and that has made us you know, the largest player in South Africa. I'll talk about the industry as a whole, because as I say, we are the smallest segment, even though we're the largest in residential. The problem is being solved by the solar industry as a whole, and that's what's, what's really exciting. We've made it simple, standardized, and it's, it's scalable, and there's lots of people that are joining it. So that's part of our vision to be um, solar in every home, and there's so many great, great companies that are doing it. Just to talk about the results, in two and a half years, okay, the first six to nine months of a startup business is very slow. So let's call it in two years, we built a 75 megawatt solar farm around thousands of roofs countrywide, decentralized, with, with no reliance on the grid, um, which is a big solar farm. Um, we've managed to attract one and a half billion rand, except we've got attracted more capital than that, but we've invested one and a half billion rand in the South African economy, which is significant. And I think the, the message there is if you can find solutions to these complex problems, there's plenty of capital in South Africa for South African challenges. It's not all doom and gloom. Um, again, I'm wearing the, the rose tinted glasses here, but I, I've seen it. I've seen it firsthand that in two to two and a half years, if you set up, if you apply your mind to problems and look for those solutions to those problems, you can attract the capital. Um, I'll talk about the industry as a whole. The industry as a whole last year alone built 2.6 gigawatts. Now, this is jargon, so I'm sorry for the jargon there, but effectively what that has meant is two to three stages of load shedding just provided by solar alone last year. And that's why the first three months of the year, I fundamentally believe if you look at the ESCOM performance and it's all public data, there was no improvement in ESCOM performance the first three months of the year. However, we had a lot lower load shedding than we had this time last year, where it was pretty much every day. I mean, if you were in South Africa, it was really tough. Um, so that's given ESCOM the ability to take a lot of their emergency production off, maintain it, and I think there are some good things happening at ESCOM. And you can see that data there. And now we're sitting 44 days with load shedding, which I do think you can be cynical and say we shouldn't celebrate that. I think we should celebrate that. That's fantastic news because it's really important. The suffering that load shedding is causing um, uh, needs, to, needs to stop. Um, we often get asked, are we, are we looking forward to after the election that load shedding comes back? Absolutely not. We don't believe that fundamentally. Solar is not a product about backup. It's actually a product about uh, saving money in the future and also trying to solve a global climate crisis that we, that we sit on. Um, I know that there's some skepticism around um, green energy and the global movement. I firmly believe that we will be isolated in South Africa from the global economy if we do not transition to a sustainable energy mix. And you just have to look, look at carbon border adjustment mechanisms as an example where our steel and our, all our raw materials will not be exported into the, into the EU in the next 10 years if we do not do something to get at least meaningful progress towards this. I'm not advocating that we switch off coal power stations that would have a fundamentally negative impact on South Africa, but we have to get the mix right. Um, we plan to do 10, a 10 billion rand investment. I think we're well on the way to raising most of that capital, and we've got fantastic partners, as I said. If you, if you set up, if you have a vision and a purpose that can align, um, there is money available for it. Uh, we've, been, we've been blessed with fantastic shareholders and, and great uh, financial institutions that continue to approach us. We've created 600 plus 
direct and indirect jobs. I think that's an, an underestimate because of the supply chain impacts that we, it's very hard to track. And just Go Solo alone has prevented last year, we estimate 60 hours of load sharing. That's just one company. But again, the 2.6 gigawatts that have been put on by the sector have actually taken off thousands and thousands of hours of load sharing, which is, which is fantastic. Um, we've just, we're just getting started. A lot of people say the industry is saturated, it's going to slow down, it's load shedding uh, reliant. I think what this chart is trying to just, this is effectively the income levels and this latest census data on where households in South Africa sit. So there's 17.8 million households in South Africa. So three, uh, the, the average people, person per household has actually dropped. So there's more households, fewer people, so that, that translates into our population. Um, there's about 2.2 million people at the moment where, who have accessibility to some kind of solar solution through subscription. It used to be a lot smaller before subscription solar arrived, but unfortunately this is still the middle income to upper income segment of South Africa. And we estimate based on data we've seen that that's only about 5.6% penetrated. Overall, South Africa is about 0.7% solar penetration compared to the UK, which is 3%. Again, how can, how can the, U the UK have more solar than us? And places like Australia are in the 30s. So this is really, really happening quickly. So I think the challenge is, as well for the industry now is, is how we find ways to find, to, to give reliable, clean power to the broader economy, not just the middle to upper income households. Um, there's another 4.9 million households that are consuming electricity um, but can't afford solar solutions of any kind. And then there's a huge segment of the economy that's not reliant on, that, that is really struggling and, and hasn't got that formal infrastructure. So again, uh, we just one business and we're trying to solve problems, but I hope that there can be some, we can ignite some, um, some fire in, in those in the audience and, and through their networks to try and come in and solve these complex problems. Um, so I think in summary, solar is going to continue to grow. I see no sense of it abating. It would be completely counter to international trends. Again, I think there's a room for it sitting very much side by side with, with other wonderful technologies that, that we've discussed. Um, and, and that includes gas and, and all the, the, the things we've heard about this morning, which are really interesting. I'd love to hear more about it. There's great opportunities in South Africa. It's not just the solar industry. It's the intersection between two different economies. We've got a, we've got a very underdeveloped economy and we've got some parts of the economy that are very, uh, very developed. That intersection creates huge opportunities. There's huge inequality that we need to address. Um, and there's huge challenges that have come out of state failures that we've, we all know. And if you can solve those kind of problems, I think there's, there's great entrepreneurs out there, great businesses and great investment going into those. So, so my, my ask is if you're voting this, this weekend, come back one day, come and invest. The sun shines and there's lots of great opportunities for you there. And we do, we do need lots of minds solving this problem. We need lots of capital. We need to have innovative solutions because there's still lots of regulatory reform. It's not, you know, there's lots of regulatory reform and help that the government and the new government, I hope, gets to try and make sure that we re reform en energy policy. Our energy laws in South Africa are 15 years old. The industry, the energy landscape has changed fundamentally over the 15 years. So we can't rely on the same regulation, same reform. Uh, we looked at all the, because uh, there's a political theme to today because it's two weeks to the election. We looked at all the election manifestos. Every political party out there, whoever you're considering voting, is talking about this pretty much in the, fr in the front page of their manifesto. I think we would have liked to see some more specific examples and, and some more detail. But energy reform, energy policy is going to be critical on who you choose to vote for. Um, because if we don't manage it correctly, this new industry will not see the potential that it needs to. So I think that's, that's me in summary. Just wanted to share that story and hopefully that's a story of hope uh, and we can have more stories of hope that can, can catalyze from seeing problems a different way.